Hey everybody, this is Dave here at Pulp Alley and today we are going to talk about creating characters and a league. And it really doesn't matter if you've created a hundred characters or if this is the very first time you are going to try to make a character. Uh, I hope everybody is going to get something out of this video. Not only are we going to talk about how to create the individual characters, we're going to talk about what makes a league and we're also going to talk about a little bit of strategy and ideas about how then to use the league that you create in a scenario. So this is going to be a lot of fun, a lot of information. Uh, let's uh, take a quick moment right here to uh, ask you to, to click that like button. Uh, that's important to us. So take a moment right now while I'm asking and, and hit that like button for us. If you're not a subscriber, you ought to be. So uh, please hit that subscribe button for us as well if you're not a subscriber. Um, if, if you're already a subscriber, be sure and click that bell notification and, and double check to make sure it's still clicked because sometimes it shuts off on you. So so double check and make sure that that notification is uh, clicked so you'll get a notification when we upload a new video. And uh, for this video, I really would appreciate it if you would share it out there so we could reach uh, uh, more viewers. To create a league, and, and all basic Pulp Alley leagues include 10 slots. And you can say those are 10 points, however you want to go about it. But this means that in nearly every league that is created is created with the exact same rules, regardless if you're creating a league of Roman, uh, you know, legionnaires, uh, Fridge Foreign Legion, uh, Western Cowboys, Space Rangers, whatever you're doing, you start with a 10-slot roster. Then you fill those slots in with characters and perks. Today, we're not really going to talk about perks so we're going to make a 10-slot league without any perks. Uh, to do that, a, a character uh, uses a number of slots equal to their level. So a level 1 character, one slot. A level 2 character takes two slots. A level 3 character takes three slots. So the leader, although they're level 4, they do not actually require any slots. They are the central character around which the entire league is built. They are basically the, 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 the foundation for your league. You have to have a leader most of the time. Um, so, there's a handy-dandy roster. It's in the, uh, the rule book here. Let's see if I can show this to you. What camera is that? That looks like it's probably this one. Uh, look at this. Uh, this is for the Pulp Alley Skirmish Game. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Tabletop Skirmish Game. Really, really good, good, good game. Um, now, there is, oh, there's rosters in here. There's also a lot of pre-generated and made-up leagues, but there's nothing wrong with making up your own characters because uh, that can be a lot of fun. That can be a lot of fun. So, the, here's a blank roster sheet right here. This is actually the one that I printed up and I'm going to be scribbling on today. So that's what your blank roster looks like. And then you get into the uh, league roster, how to fill it out, how to create your characters. But you don't really need to go through all of this today because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the short and sweet version and we're just going to get it done. We are actually, by the time this video is done today... I hope that you will have created a league with me. So I'd like you to go along with me on this little journey here and, and this little adventure and create your first Pulp Alley League. Now, I've I'm, I'm been working on uh, this group of uh, uh, Western characters here. So this is the league that I'm going to create today. And if you'd like, uh, you could pick out a group of of models to sit in front of you while we're doing this. You know, you can pause this and come back to it in a, in a, in a couple moments after you get out six characters that you think you'd like to put together in a league. Uh, this is going to be a six-character league that I'm going to do today. Most leagues will average, most of the leagues that I do will average between five and six characters. You can do more and you can do less, but Five to six models is kind of the sweet spot as far as I'm concerned. Also, I think it gives you the most flexibility when you get on the table and start playing a scenario. So 
think about that as well. Part of what I do when I'm making a league is I, I do some, most of the time I will pick out the models first, and then I will kind of create the profiles to fit those characters. Now, sometimes I have characters in my mind that I just create those characters, and then I have to track down the models. Either way works. There's nothing wrong with either, either way, but... Today, I've got these six models. I, the, this is a work in progress. They're not done yet, but uh, I wanted to go ahead and try and show you how to, how to create the profiles for them. All right, so we're going to start with the very easiest character. We're going to start with uh, the simplest character to create, and then we're going to work up to the leader. The first thing that you do on a uh, level one character is that all of their skills start at one die six, one D six. So my level one character is gonna be this fellow that won't stand up over here. So this is my level one character that I'm doing. You don't always have to include a level one character in your league, but today for this exercise, let's, let's make sure we include one. Uh, so, uh, we're going to call him Kenny. Level one characters are the absolute bottom of the totem pole. They are, they are the characters that make everybody else look good. Don't, uh, don't get your heart set on them surviving the scenario because chances are many level one characters will not survive a scenario. Just too many things are out there that are going to get them whether it's a fight, whether it's a, a peril, you know, yada, yada. Uh, level one characters seldom make it through a scenario. <laughs> so we know that his health starts at a D6 uh, asterisk. So there's, it's a D6. We put an asterisk next to it to remember that if he fails a health check, he is simply removed from the table. That's what the asterisk means. So, uh, poor Kenny here, if he fails a health check, we just pick him up and carry him off the table. He doesn't go into the down position, in other words. All of his skills are going to start at a D6. So, we're going to put it 1D6 in Brawl. We're going to put 1D6 in Shoot. We're going to put 1D6 in Dodge. We're going to put 1D6 in Might, 1D6 in Finesse, and 1D6 in Cunning. So, he's got 1D6 in everything. Now, as a level 1 character, he gets 1 ability. So we would look through the level one abilities in the book, and there are two pages of them. There are two pages of level one abilities. There's a lot. But today, the only choice I'm giving you are these three. Agile, Fierce, or Marksman. Put those three abilities at the top of your list for every single character you design. These are perhaps the most valuable, the most important, the most useful skills in Pulp Alley. I'm going to say them again. Agile, Fierce, and Marksman. So, I would say a, a good 75% of the characters that I create will have one of those abilities. Uh, they are the sort of abilities that are, you are going to use often in the scenario. That's what makes them valuable. They are level one abilities. Any level character can take them. And, and they are the, the abilities that you're going to use over and over every single turn that that character is on the table. Chances are you will have an opportunity to use it. Agile, what Agile does is that it is going to increase the number of dice that you have in your dodge skill. It gives that character a slightly better chance to survive the scenario. Marksman is for shooting, and it's going to add an extra dice to their shoot skill so that when they get involved in a shootout, they're going to be typically rolling an extra dice. Uh, so instead of simply rolling one dice in a shootout normally, they would get to roll two dice in a shootout. That actually gives them a little bit of teeth and makes them somewhat dangerous. Um, fierce uh, gives them an extra dice in their brawling skills. So now you have a character that if they get involved in a brawl, they're going to be a little more dangerous than they were. 
So for Kenny here, I, uh, I got two things I'm kind of thinking. I'm thinking, should I, should I increase his, uh, should I increase his shoot skill because he's got his rifle there? That could be an option. But then I was also looking at this crazy pose, and it looks like he's leaping away. So I was thinking, you know, that, that's a pretty good pose for someone that's going to do a lot of dodging. So now he has two die six in dodge instead of just one die six in dodge. And that character is done. This is the sort of character, these low level follower type characters are there, you know, Sun Tzu would call them leapers and agitators. He, these are the style of characters that are really out there to be a nuisance, uh, to distract your opponent. You know, what's that guy doing over there? You know, you want to keep these guys, you want to use them very smart. You're going to use them, you know, moving from cover to cover. You don't want to leave them out in the open, you know, just to get rained on by, you know, blasty blarfiness. Uh, but you can have a lot of fun with these low-level characters, just trying to use them as a distraction. I also use them as a supporting character for the bigger characters. So sometimes when a bigger character is about to do something or getting involved in something, then I like to swing one of those level one or level two characters in there to give them an assist. Each ally costs two slots. So if we're going to have three allies in there, remember we have a 10 slot league. So three allies is going to be six total slots. So this is going to be Ringo on this end. And then we have Hank. And then this fella here, let's have a little bit of fun and just call him Jelly Bean. So that is Jelly Bean. So the first thing that we're going to do with Jellybean, Hank, and Ringo is we're going to write down their health. And they're all starting with a D6 health. So I can fill that out for all three of them. So we know they don't have anything at a D8. So we can fill in all of the, all of the slots behind the D with 6 because that's all they roll. That's all they roll is D6s. So just real quickly, I'm going to fill in every slot behind the D so I know that's what they're rolling is D6s. View of my roster. Let's see. So there you go. There you go. Look at that. So I, uh, their health uh, is all a D6. Uh, um, now you don't put a number in front of health. Uh, health, it just has a single slot there. But for all of these other ones, we're going to need to put a number in front of the D. We know they roll D6s, but how many do they roll? And this is where we can have some fun. Um, so now you can pick two of their skills to start at two dice. And all the other skills start at one dice. So let's look at them. So we have Jelly Bean here. He's definitely going to be uh, shooting a lot. Um, so he's going to have two dice in shoot and two dice in dodge. So I'm going to give him two dice in shoot, two dice in dodge, and that means everything else starts at 1d6. Let's see if I can show that to you again what I did there. So you could pick out one of your characters and just do that. Pick out two of their skills and you can look at the character or you can think about what you want to do and say any two of their skills can be at two dice and everything else is at one dice. Now when I look at Hank here, when I look at Hank, I feel like, I feel like he might be my brawler. So I'm going to give him two dice in Brawl, and, and I'm going to give his other two dice in Dodge. And then I'm going to give him all remaining ones. Now I have one character left. I got Ringo over here, so we're going to change things up a little bit here, and we're going to give him two dice in Brawl and two dice in Shoot and one dice in everything else. And so I'll show you where I'm at here. Can you see that? 
So Jellybean has two dice in shoot and dodge. Um, one dice in everything else. Hank has two dice in brawl and dodge. And one dice in everything else. And Ringo has two dice in brawl and shoot and one dice in everything else. So there you go. So now the next thing I'm going to do is each one of these characters gets an ability, one ability. And what I'm going to ask you to do for your first characters here or for this league that we're doing today is to pick one of those three abilities that I mentioned earlier, marksman, fierce, or agile. So for those three characters, I know Jellybean is a shooter, so um, we want his to be marksman. So I'm going to put marksman down, and that gives him plus one shoot. And I always, I always like to just uh, include that up at the top, so I'm going to change that too and make it a three. Maybe I shouldn't use a Sharpie when I do this. But you'll see that I gave him the marksman skill, marksman ability, and that means his shoot is bumped up to three dice instead of two. Hmm, interesting. Now, I'm going to basically do the same thing again because Hank, I want him to be my brawler. I'm going to give him fierce. Now, you don't have to do it like this. You could look at your characters and go, well, I want them all to be marksmen, or I want them all to be fierce, or I want them all to be agile. You do your three characters however you want. I'm just simply showing you how I'm doing it, and then you do it you know, the way you want. And you're going to have a league by the time we're done with this. Fierce gives me a plus one brawl. So again, I'm going to go up here to Brawl, and I'm going to change that to, to a 3. And there are two characters, two more characters done. So you can see Hank there now has three dice in Brawl and two dice in Dodge, and those two characters are done. Jellybean and Hank are finished. So now we have Ringo. Now what do we do with Ringo? What? do we do with Ringo? Here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and just cover the bases and I'm going to give him, we already gave him two dice in shoot and two dice in uh, brawl. So I'm going to give him agile and that will give him plus one to his dodge. And so up here under Dodge, I'm going to change that to two. So we have three very different characters created here. Look at that. Three very different characters. We have one that is fairly shooty with three dice, six. That's pretty good. We have Hank there, which is pretty brawly with three dice, six. And then we have Ringo, which is kind of a mixed bag. You know, he's got two dice in brawl. He's got two dice in shoot, and he has two dice in dodge. So he's a, a very balanced character. Now, again, these are supporting characters. These are the sort of characters that you're going to use to, to distract and harass your opponent. They're there to support your leaders. They're there to rush in when your leader or your sidekick are involved in something. Sometimes you might send an ally in first. Like let's say your, your leader is about to take on the enemy leader. Well, sometimes you'll try and throw a little bit of distraction on that leader by having one of your allies or a follower come up and engage them first and maybe try and get a multiple fights penalty on them before your leader goes in on them and creating those, those pincer moves, those distraction, you know, put, throw some suppressing fire on them and that sort of thing. Uh, all of those tactics work very well. Real world tactics work very well in Pulp Alley because it's designed that way. Next character we're going to do now is a sidekick level. We've already made four characters, and I hope you're following along and, and writing down your characters and picking what you chose to go with. I'd, I'd really like to know how you're creating your character as well, so that would be awesome 
to include some comments about which abilities do you think are most effective. There's, there's, uh, there's a lot of different, you know, philosophies, a lot of different, you know, opinions on this. I think marksman frequently jumps up there because you can start using it right away. You can start using it the moment you see someone and you can start throwing some, some damage their way. Fierce can be one that is a little bit tricky because you've got to engage and close with the enemy. But, so maybe you're at a disadvantage while you're closing, right? Because your shoot isn't as good. So you have to make sure you use a lot of cover, a lot of line of sight blockers, things like that, to move into position where you can get that, that move in there to tie up uh, the enemy. And agile is, uh, because it increases your dodge, uh, it's almost useful in all of those situations. Uh, so if you get involved in a shootout, well, you have you have your dodge skill there to try and avoid getting hit. And you can use dodge in a brawl. Uh, you can use dodge if you have trying to get through a perilous area, yada, yada, yada. So although it's dodge specifically isn't as effective as the other two for winning the game, uh, having a decent number of dice in dodge can kind of help your characters stay in the fight. Uh, and, and and lead to you winning the game. Um, I, I always caution people about putting too many dice in dodge. Uh, that, I think, can sometimes, you know, just not really work out all that well. But having knowing when to use your dodge is, is a key uh, tactic in, in playing Paul Valley. Let's do our, our sidekick now. So we have uh, our sidekick here, and I think I'm going to call him Jake. I'm going to call him Jake. He's, looks like he has a shotgun or something here. Uh, you know, so again, we're kind of looking at what what is it about this character that we're going to do. Um, and again, I'm going to ask you, he's going to get two abilities. So I'm going to ask you to uh, start off with those same three abilities that we've been picking from. Agile, uh, Fierce, and Marksman. So pick out one of those three as his first ability, and then we're going to get another ability added in there. We also need to put down his, uh, his skills and his health. We know that his health starts at a D8, so we can write that in. I think I'm going to make him Brawly. So I'm definitely going to put uh, three die eight in my brawl. So here, when you're writing your skills down to start with, put three skills at three die eight. And I want his uh, brawling to be at, uh, at three die eight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave his shoot a little bit low. I'm going to put his dodge at three die eight. So he is dodgy. That'll help him get into brawling range. And I'm also going to give him a 3 die 8 in might. And that means the other three skills now. Let me show you what I got going here so far. So he has 3 die 8 in brawl, 3 die 8 in dodge, and 3 die 8 in might. So I have three skills left. And for those, we're going to do 2 die 6. 2 die 6. 2 die 6. 2 die 6. So there are his skills. Now, the first thing that I want to do is to, uh, to pick out uh, the, uh, those same, one of those first three skills that I, that I talked with you about. So Agile, Marksman, or Fierce. I think I'm going to go with Fierce, so he is going to be uh, a, a real handful uh, in a in close combat in in a brawl. He's he's going to be a real handful there. So I'm going to give him plus one to his brawl. So that's going to put his brawl up to four die eight. Well, that looks kind of messy and dirty, but anyway, you know what I'm doing. Uh, four die eight. Now, for the other three skills, 
uh, or for the other skill slot that we're looking at, we're going to pick another skill. And, and here, remember that a level three character could pick their skills from the level one list, the level two list, or the level three list of abilities. But for Jake here, what I'm going to ask you to concentrate on are three. So the three abilities that I'd like you to decide on are these three. Indomitable. Indomitable lets Jake re-roll his recovery checks. The next choice I'd like you to consider is an ability called Veteran. And what Veteran does is it means that Jake does not suffer the multiple fights penalty when he is shooting, when he's involved in a shootout and using his shoot skill. The other ability is called Moxie, and it does the exact same thing as a Veteran does, except that it works for the Brawl skill. Now I got a tough choice because I'm, I, I'm envisioning him as a Brawler. Those are the three abilities that I'd like you to consider for, for your character's next uh, slot for his next ability, for his second ability. I want you to pick between Indomitable, uh, Veteran, and Moxie. So they're, they're all really good. They're all really good. And right now, I guess I'm really thinking about uh, Moxie. Moxie fits him, right? Because he's that brawler type. Um, but Indomitable also feels really good, too. Mm, I'm going to go with Indomitable on mine. Let me know what you picked for your sidekick. And again, I'm going to remind you that there are pages of abilities that you can pick. So, Jake is done. Jake is done. Jake is, uh, is finished at that point. So, um... He's got four die eight in brawl. He's got two die six in shoot, three die eight in dodge, three die eight in might, two die six in finesse, two die six in cunning. He's uh, that plus one to his brawl is already included, and he has indomitable, which lets me reroll recovery. Okay, so that is um, that's Jake. Pretty, pretty tough character. Uh, I would use him again to go after plot points. Is, is now he, if, if we're going to divide, if we're going to create a, a group uh, of two, if we're going to create two kind of action groups here, uh, fire teams or whatever, um, Jake would be leading one of those fire teams and would really be the character that would be going out there uh, he's, he's the, the one that the enemy really have to be afraid of, but we want to support him with one or two of the other supporting characters to make sure he has some backup along with him. So we'll get into that a little bit more. The last character we're going to make is our leader, and this time we're going to name him Royo. So R-O-Y-O. Um, again, you pick uh, a, a name that fits your character. We know a leader starts with a D10 on their health, so we can go ahead and fill that in. On leader, what you're going to want to do first off is pick out the four skills that you want to be really, really good in. So these are skills that are far and above what a normal person would be even close to being capable of. So you're going to pick out four skills, and they are going to be at three die ten. So, let's look at our character here. Let's look at our character that we have sitting out here. Well, uh, definitely shoot. Uh, so, I'm going to give him three die ten and shoot. Uh, I'm going to give him, maybe he's not the greatest brawler. Maybe I'm going to give him a 3 die 10 in dodge. Uh, I'm going to give him... Hmm, what do you say? What do you think we've got going on here? What are the other two that he's really good at? You know what? Another way that we can, we can go about this is we can look at what are his weak spots. Maybe he's not the most brawly. Maybe it's, not, maybe it's his might. Maybe it's his might. Let's give him a 2 die 8 there. 
So 2 die 8 in might. Now, don't get me wrong, 2 die 8, you know, and if you look down at what your allies and your follower have, remember, they have 1 die 6. So 2 die 8 is still a very sturdy, tough guy. It's just not uh, on the same level as like Jake there. Jake has three die eight in his might. So Jake is actually stronger. You could think of it in those sort of terms. So um, Royo has two die eight in might. And I don't know that I want to give him a um, two die eight in brawl. Hmm. Yeah, let's do it. We'll give him two die eight in brawl. So he's got a little bit of a weak spot there. And then we'll put the other 3 die 10 in finesse and 3 die 10 in cunning. So uh, his weak areas uh, comparatively are uh, in brawl and uh, might. Everything else he's starting at 3 die 10, which is, you know, really amazing uh, level for, for humans. Um, so for the three abilities that he gets, and he gets to start with three abilities, we're going to, once again, the first one that we consider is from our list. So again, think about that list that we started with. The same three that, we, that I said were the most important and the most valuable, um, start with one of those and put it on your first slot. And I think it's going to be shoot for, for Royo here. So he's going to have Marksman, right? So plus one, shoot. And that's going to get him up to four, die six. So look at that now. He's got four, die six. I'm sorry, four, die ten. Four, die ten, and shoot. For the next slot... For the next ability, I would like you to consider one of those three abilities that we picked out for Jake's second slot. So again, I want you to pick one of those three. Start with Indomitable, Moxie, or Veteran. I'm going to make this guy shooty, so uh, I'm going to give him Veteran. Okay, so he does not suffer a shooting penalty for multiple fights, so you could represent that with him having his, his six guns out and blazing away. Blam, 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 blam. So the enemy is not going to be able to overwhelm him uh, in shooting. He's going to be able to maintain his high skill regardless of how many times he's shot at. Pretty powerful. But also look at the fact that Royo has a relatively, uh, from compared to his shooting skill, he's not a great brawler. So if they could get in on him and brawl him, he, then he might be in a little bit of trouble. 2 die 8 is nothing to sniff at, but, you know, he could be in trouble there. The next list of skills that I'm going to ask you to consider, because he gets three, right? So pick one of these three. Now, again, a level 4 character you could pick from about uh, what is it, five or six pages of abilities here. There are tons of abilities to pick from, but I'm asking you for today to consider one of these three. So consider Danger Sense. What that means is Royo could automatically pass his first peril every turn. Hmm, that's pretty, pretty nice. Um, uh, also, um, Untouchable, which means he could, he always counts as being in cover. So when people are shooting at him again, he will always counts as being in cover, even if he isn't. He could be walking down the middle of the street uh, rather than lurking or hiding behind a wagon or whatever, and he would still count as being in cover. And the last one that I would ask you to consider is called Nerves of Steel, and what that lets you do is it lets you cancel um, any minus one penalty that is affecting one of his skills. So that could be a minus one penalty that is affecting any of his skills that turn. For example, if I chose to run and then shoot uh, with him, I would have a minus one penalty for running and shooting. But if, uh, if I have nerves of steel, then I could say, 
I'm going to cancel that penalty and run and then shoot with my full number of dice. That's a pretty cool ability because it can affect a lot of different penalties and, and you know, give you, give you an opportunity to ignore them. But since he already has veteran, I don't think I want to pick that. Danger sense is pretty good, except that I already have three dice in finesse and cunning. So I think Royo can handle himself when it comes to challenges. And that leaves me with my last one, which I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with Untouchable. And that is our league, boys and girls. Take a look at that. So there you go. There is Royo. He's got 2 die 8 in Brawl, 4 die 10 in Shoot, 3 die 10 in Dodge, 2 die 8 in Might, 3 die 10 in Finesse, 3 die 10 in Cunning. He is a marksman. That plus one is already included. He is a veteran, so he doesn't suffer a shoot penalty for multiple fights. And he is untouchable always in cover. We got Jake. We got Jellybean. We got Hank. We got Ringo. And we got Kenny. This is your league that you have created today. Hopefully, you made a league as well. And, and, and I don't think it has... Uh, hopefully you, it wasn't exactly like I did mine. Uh, you know, the, I really encourage you to make those choices, those options, and think about how they could affect your character. This is picking out abilities that make a whole lot of sense in a lot, a lot of different scenarios. So this is a fairly balanced uh, league. There are characters in there that are good brawlers. There are characters in there that are good uh, shooters. Uh, so from that angle, you know, they're going to be able to hold their own in a shootout or a brawl. Um, and you have, when it comes to doing the plot points, which is really a fairly important aspect of the game, you have, you have your sidekick and your leader where you're really going to want to focus on moving towards those plot points, right? Just like in the old serials and the pulps and things like that, the characters really aren't just there to fight. They're there to do something, and that something is the plot points. Is it rescuing uh, you know, the bank teller that's being held captive? Is it finding the, uh, the stash of loot that the... That the robbers stole from the bank, you know, is, you know, on and on and on. So there's, there are things that are out there that you're going to want to be able to do. And for those, for this league, I'm really going to have to count on Jake and Royo to kind of carry the weight. The other characters are there as supporting characters. And, and again, I want to talk about the idea of having possibly like two fire teams or the, that, that simple idea. So if I had Jake, if I said Jake and Royo were the leaders of those two fire teams, um, what I would say then is that maybe Jake could use somebody with him that's a good shooter. So I, I think I would put Jellybean, maybe run with uh, Jake. Maybe Royo could use some backup in a brawl. So maybe I would put uh, Hank here over here with... Uh, with uh, Royo to give him some extra support. Um, let's scoot these over a little bit. Let's see, then I still have two characters left. Um, I think I'll put, put Kenny with Royo just because, uh, you know, he's not particularly good. And then throw uh, uh, Ringo over here with, with Jake. So now that would be my two groups that I would put on the table. Now, sometimes they might start off really, really close and then head off in different directions. But their goal is, is to close in on the plot points that are on the table and make sure that they can complete them. And along the way, there's going to be gunplay and there's going to be fisticuffs and all, you know, all the tussles that you have to have in a good cereal or a good pulp. That's just part of it, but never lose sight that the plot points are really how you determine victory, and those are what are important when you get out there. Rule number one is always have fun. What do you guys think about this? So I hope this helped you. Uh, if you have to come back to this video later, hope you this helped you kind of 
starting off. I know there are tons and tons of abilities, but use the ones that I talked about today because they are the most important, useful, valuable abilities that you're going to get a lot of use out of. Now, as you play more games and you start to explore the other abilities, you're going to find things that, hey, I think I want to try this Cursed Presence, or I think I want to try this Sharp, or Brute, or Slam, or, you know, there's just so many uh, that you can pick from and try, but this shows you how to put together a good, solid league just based on the abilities that I talked about today. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know down in the comments. Leave a comment down below and let me know what abilities you really like. How did you put your league together? And uh, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you're a subscriber. And share this video if you have time today. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. Bye, everybody. <laughs>